So, um, as the name suggests, tree and metrics are so involved in trees and measuring trees, and I suppose I'll just give an outline as to what our company is about, but I'm standing in for um, my colleague who was supposed to speak, so, but he's in Sweden, somewhere stuck in the middle of a forest somewhere, so I've taken over his, uh, his role here today. But to give you what we're about, I suppose we're, we believe in a better way as to how we utilise the, not just Ireland's resources, but the Earth's resources. And given that forests occupy about 25% of the world's land area, it's also meeting and facing some difficult challenges ahead in that it's predicted that wood demand is set to double by 2050. And then that the sustainably managed forests of the world need to meet this challenge. So how do you meet the challenge? You meet the challenge by we believe in having better information as to how you utilize the resource. And there's also ex other challenges around carbon. So 20% of the world's carbon emissions is through uh, deforestation and degradation where you have soil um, <coughs> disturbance. So I suppose we, we start with having a forest Well, you need to measure it better before you can manage it better. And our tagline is you know, creating more wood from fewer trees. And that, through the use of technology and systems, can be achieved, and we've proven that. And where we started from, I'm a forester background, uh, as Aoife said, um, and was a friend of mine, and we looked at a way that could be different to what was, shall we say, the traditional methods of how people measured and managed the forest. And we've grown that company then to having 14 staff and having electronic engineers and artificial intelligence engineers and guys of different skill sets, uh, we've built quite a strong team and we've operated now in 14 countries. And then I suppose the other secret is just collaboration of working with universities and research agencies to bring us along their word. So from Ireland to Australia to the States, um, Sweden, Finland, all of these renowned countries in relation to forestry. So just kind of what is the technology based on? We're looking at sensors, the power of the web, analytics, big data, artificial intelligence, and then providing independent information and trusted information for people to be able to make a better decision about what it's about. So we provide better data for inventory management, for people to value the forest, um, forest management to improve timber yield. And on that we can, there's also an economic imperative that when you have this better information, it's also allowing people to both reduce their cost, but also to increase the value that they get from the forest. And the bottom part is a little tagline that we've taken from IBM is that you have all of these sensors, and, um, and when you, but when you interconnect these sensors together, you can make them more intelligent and make people's um, lives um, easier, but also to reduce the use for uh, resources such as energy and water and wood, etc. So we service our technology for our clients. Um, we believe it's a world-leading technology. Uh, we're Irish based and it's probably an advantage to us being Irish based because we're not seen as a threat to any of these other forestry nations or countries shall we say so people are comfortable about their data sitting here in Ireland and just recently in communication with the Russian state agency so hopefully we'll, um, we'll have uh, some data from there also. So just to kind of give you, well, what are we competing against? And this is typically how forests are measured at the moment. So a guy goes around with the calipers. He in, brings back that data to his office. That's plugged into a, a model. He utilizes a map to determine what the forest contents are. And then from that, then to do an estimation of what the volume is in the forest. And that volume estimation, because it's all based on models, can be out by you know up to 30 percent 
So when a guy has gone out estimating a volume, he could say, I've got 1,000 cubic meters, but in effect, it could be 700 cubic meters, and he brings that to the industry. They're expecting 1,000. Don't get it, and then the, it's go to the next forest, try to get the next, the next resource. So with that poor decisions, Westmead, there's about 10 billion euros lost globally from just the fact of the, having this poor information. And the poor information relates then to well, eventually the forest is cut down and is created into these log products. So we've, this other image which we throw up to people is that when people don't know what resource that they have, well, then in the forest sector, they'll generally stockpile the resource. So if I can't get it in the forest that's in the background and the hill behind my mill, I'll, well, I'll stockpile them in my yard just to know that I have them. And it's not just a kind of, uh, just in time is a, is a quite a common manufacturing principle. We can say, well, it's more like a just-in-case manufacturing principle when you apply that to having poor information. And this is another aspect of, of information is, is the whole thing of mapping and people determining what they have from either old 6-inch maps or 25-inch maps or taking images from Google or whatever, but Using that information really can be vastly improved by other techniques and systems. And that last image, I've just translated it then by using better sensors and information. And this is still taking Earth observation data, but now from the new sensors that's been launched with um, European Space Agency, etc., you can now start to monitor and measure these resources more efficiently. And uh, as a guy famously said that, you know, geography is now history. You know, it's not that you need to have, um, you can log on to the web and you can go on to Bing Maps or Google Maps and you can view a forest in Finland the same as you can view it in Cork. So the, having this extra information, we believe, helps uh, people manage the resource, but also to monitor the resource and how it's utilized after. So from a legislation and an enforcement point of view, uh, it can be very easily monitored. There's other such systems then um, where you've sensors from aircraft um, are, these are probably our two core pieces of technology and uh, we also have a system based on the ground. So compared to that guy with that calipers walking around the tree we're using sensors to give us the information and having these sensors linked with GPS coordinates we can now fit digital models to the actual location of the forest and give a uh, more accurate assessment of the contents. And we can then bring it down to, well, how the forest is described. So now it's not just a block of forestry or a field of trees. You've got trees of different qualities and um, percentages of saw log and pulp volumes. And we now give this information back to the forest industry as to what you should be expecting from your, your forest. Um, and this is kind of, and this is all kind of automated systems, just using um, earth observation data and uh, area lidar, for example. So that's one of the devices that we use. So it's a digital 3D scanner. Uh, that digital 3D scanner, you just set it up with your each of your plot locations, um, and you're sending a laser beam onto the surface of the tree. You have about 45 million of these survey points collected in three minutes. So instead of that guy with his calipers and tape taking one measurement 1.3 meters above the ground, we're now building profiles of the tree uh, the same as, um, same as if you're standing there yourself to, to look at it. And that then is the data then that comes back to us. So if we want to take that imagery that's come back to us from Canada. So we take that scan image, we digitize the profile of the trees, and then we start to build the profile of the trees also taking straightness into account. And when we have this, what we term our unit of currency, we can now then determine what is the type of logs, saw logs, pallet logs, pulp logs, uh, waste, etc., that you're going to have in the forest. And then we provide this information then back to the customer as, uh, as we believe this trust in the trees and trust in the data. So you give us your information, be it aerial, we'll supplement it with what's 
on the ground, and now we can start to tell you uh, what type of products you're going to get in the forest. So that data, the guy's out in the forest, he's taking a GPS reading as to where he is, data comes back to us, we process it, and we provide that information then over the web. So that then is the second part to our technology, is first of all using sensors, and then using the web in order for people to share and utilize this information. So sharing this information can be within the company, but it can also be shared, shall we say, with the legislative authority. Um, it can be shared right through the organization, so it's not just the guys that's measuring the trees, but it can be shared right through to CEO or CFO. Um, so we believe this sharing of data should help people um, uh, do their business better. And I suppose it's no harm to maybe look at it as a, a little bit of a big, big brother attitude too, um, that you have these other sensors that can tell you what you're doing. So we take all of that information and then we can start to give a distribution as to what's the type of products that you're, you are getting. And then we put that onto this uh, web interface that I'm saying. So this is an example of data that we've provided for stake grower in Finland. They can come and log in um, onto the system and they can come to the forest and they can see the actual volume of timber that they have in, in the individual forest. And then we can bring it down to the plot level and as you click on each of these items of the trees, you can get size of the tree and volumes, etc. So from a, um, a control perspective, um, we're saying, well, here's the data. This is what you're going to have of this forest that's sitting in a, a forest in South Australia. That's the type of trees and wood that you're going to have. And similarly, you can view into the, the type of straightness, etc. We can break that down then to when it comes to the sawmill and they want to utilize that resource into how helping them to make their, their mill more efficient. And by having these different informations, it allows them to understand well, what is the type of boards and products that they're going to get from the forest if they, if they utilize that in the mill. Um, and then by applying that with uh, prices for each of the log products, they can start then to give a, a forest valuation to the property. Um, this is just some of the tools that's on the, on the system for the user. Then our next piece of uh, technology that we've developed is, okay, it's great having all of that information before you go to go out and harvest your forest, but then you have another team of people that go out and cut the trees. So you have all of these multiple machines out there cutting through the forest, but unless there's control and management of, over those machines, um, value loss and what you, all your best laid plans can just go down, the, go down the tubes with a guy in a phone call or a guy having a bad Monday. So again, we're using <coughs> sensors again. So the technology we're developing is using sensors to take the data that comes from these machines and transfer it back onto a user server. And now he can start to view on what's happening with the forest machine. We've implemented a sensor in relation to health and safety, so if a guy gets hurt or injured, he can press a low marker alarm, and that will send an email and text message back to the uh, head office. So just to explain a little bit about what that is, that's the, typically the type of machine that's out cutting a forest, and then this image that's up on the uh, top left there is what the term this harvesting head. So as that head is munching to, through the trees, it's also measuring uh, the length and diameter of the log types. So we're reading that measurement data coming back from that harvester head. This is the device that's sitting inside of his cab so he can see where the location of his machine is within his forest so he knows that he's within the, the legal boundary as to what he should be harvesting. So that's, uh, so from a policing and enforcement point of view, this information again can be easily displayed over the web. And that's the example of the uh, information that comes back to the user's uh, computer screen so he can see every day and to the hour um, where the machine has been working, 
has he st stayed within the boundary of which he was asked to cut and has he produced <coughs> the type of wood that was predicted. And this is kind of maybe an example of where kind of where the where it kind of can fall down without having these kind of controls in place. So if you think back to one of those previous slides, you have the guy going with his his map and um, he's trying to mark the boundary and sometimes the boundary is isn't very well defined. Uh, you know, there might you know some more guys are using GPS units to help improve that system, but by not having that information uh, beforehand, you can often, um, shall we say, veer off the track. So, just to look at this, this is means that um, a user doesn't have to go out and police the site, but you can actually look at what was on the 2010 harvest plan. You can then come back onto Google Maps or Bing Maps again and view the forest again with the 2011 imagery, and you can see actually what. What, uh, what effect this had and uh, change. And then we can, back to the user, we can tell them the number of trees that were cut, the size of the trees that were cut, um, also bringing control into place. So I suppose maybe what I'm talking about here is that there's a lots of, should we say, technology um, in this sensor web, as it's termed, and utilizing that system and making that information uh, in such a way that can be shared between users can then help with people doing, not alone just doing their business together, but helping them to um, control their, their operations and work in a more sustainable uh, fashion. And you get your products and uh, etc. coming back from that. And I suppose maybe this is one slide that we throw at people at the end is that you know, by having better information, you can apply better decisions. You can anticipate both your opportunities, but also the problems that's out there, and then helping people to manage them proactively, and then to co cooperating and making resources uh, proper, uh, more efficiently. So thank you very much. And uh, we're based here in Cork, in Mahan, and if you'd like to find out more, you can visit us at uh, trimetrics.com or email us at info at trimetrics.com. Okay, thank you very much.